Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is the shadow of the future. And the big question we're interested in addressing here is can future interaction inspire cooperation today? So referring back to the prisoner's dilemma, in a one-shot interaction, the players cannot cooperate because they individually prefer to act aggressively. And that's despite the fact that mutual cooperation is better than this mutual aggression against one another. It's just that the individual incentives sabotage cooperation. However, some interactions are truly one-shot, like a preemptive war. If we don't fight today, then if the other guy fights me, then I just disappear from the face of the earth because I'm destroyed, I'm blown away in this war. And so there is no future interaction there. That's just a one-shot game. But other games are truly repetitive, like trade and arms races. Arms races don't cause one state to just disappear overnight. And trade, of course, is a persistent thing where states are consistently trading with each other day after day, month after month, year after year. So that's a repetitive interaction. And we might be interested in how this repetition affects a cooperative game like The Prisoner's Dilemma. So can states cooperate with each other by threatening punishment in the future? And specifically, you might be interested if this kind of strategy is viable. Well, first, let's talk about the simplest model for this. The simplest model to emulate repeated interaction is just to have the states play the prisoner's dilemma twice. And so they're going to go play a prisoner's dilemma once. The moves from the first round are going to be publicly known. Both sides will see the result of the first round. And then they'll play the second round. And the type of strategy we're interested in wondering if, if it's possible here is, can the players cooperate in the first round under the threat of punishment in the second round? That is, is the strategy, I will cooperate today, and if you cooperate today as well, I will cooperate tomorrow, otherwise I'm going to defect on you. Is that a viable strategy? And the answer, unfortunately, is going to be no. Here's why. So let's talk about optimal strategies here. Stage one, something's going to happen. We don't know what that's going to be yet, but just hold it constant for a second. In stage two, something already happened, whatever happened in stage one, but at that point, the states can't alter their previous payoffs. They can't alter their payoffs from the first stage. Whatever's happened in the, sta in the first stage has happened, and there's nothing they can do about it. They can't change their payoffs. So whatever they're doing in the second period must be optimal in the second period. They must be optimizing their second stage payoffs in the second stage, regardless of what happens in the first period. So what does it mean to be optimizing one's payoffs in the second period? Well, they're just playing a prisoner's dilemma. And so that's going to mean that both of them are going to defect for the same reason as we saw in every other prisoner's dilemma before this. So the cooperative strategy is better than the mutual defection strategy, but individually they're going to want to defect. That's because for player one, if player two is going to cooperate, he's going to want to defect because one is greater than zero. And if player two defects, player one is also going to want to defect because negative one is greater than negative two. And so both of these players are going to defect because this is symmetrical for player two. So regardless of what happens in stage one, and regardless of what the other guy is going to do in stage two, it is in both guys' best interest to defect. And so as a result, in the second stage, regardless of what happens on the first stage, both defect on each other. And so in stage two, both defect. Now we can address what's going to happen in stage one. Remember, we're trying to, to find out if I will cooperate today, and if you cooperate today as well, I will cooperate tomorrow. We're trying to find out if that is a viable strategy, but we're going to see right now that this, this doesn't work. Why? Well, this part right here, I will cooperate tomorrow, can't happen, because that's not optimal. We know that in the future, we're not going to follow through with that kind of strategy. So in stage two, both players defect, and regardless of what happens in stage one here, the rival is going to defect in stage two, and so are you. That's set in stone. There's nothing that you can do in stage one to change it. And so as a result of that, the states must be optimizing for stage one and only stage one when they play at stage one. They can't be worried about what's going to happen in stage two because they already know what's going to happen. Whatever they do here is not going to affect what happens down here, so that means they have to be optimizing for stage one. And what does that mean that they have to do? Well, it means that they're going to have to play this mutual defection outcome because for each of them individually, for player one, if player two cooperates, player one's better defecting and getting one as opposed to cooperating and getting the zero. And if player two defects, player one should defect as well because negative one is greater than negative two. So regardless of what the other guy does in stage one, it's in the other guy's best interest to defect. So that means in stage one, both of them defect. And we know already that in stage two, both of them defect. And so you get in a two period game, an outcome where everyone is defecting throughout. So no cooperation was possible with two stages. That's the result with just two stages. But 
we might be wondering, well, you know, two stages, that's not a very long game. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe we can't get mutual cooperation anywhere throughout the process because it's just such a short process. What if there were a lot more stages? What if there were just N stages? Let's do this generally. So we don't know how many stages there are, but it's just going to be a lot. It's going to be N stages long. Will that be able to get us to mutual cooperation? And again, the answer is going to be no. For exactly the same reason as we saw in these first two stages, it's just going to be going up the the process of the interactions just a little bit more, and it's pretty easy to see once we look at this. So let's think about all of these stages. We don't know how many stages there are, but there's going to be n of them. So we start out at stage one, two, three. Something happens in between, and then n minus two, n minus one, and then finally we're at our final stage right here. And we need to figure out what's going to be optimal in all of these stages right here. Well, at stage n, for just as, as the same reason as in the two-shot interaction, at stage n, whatever's happened all the way through here has already happened. Whatever's happened, happened. And so they can't change anything about it, which means they have to be optimizing for just stage n when they get to stage n. And what does that mean if they're optimizing at stage n just for stage n? Well, it means that everyone is going to be defecting. So at stage n, everybody defects. We're good on that. Well, what about at stage n minus 1? As it turns out, whatever's happened, happened. And the future defection is certain. We know that down here at stage n, everyone is going to defect. And whatever up here has already happened. So we can't be defecting either this down here or all of these things up here, which means we need to be optimizing at stage n minus 1 for today. And if we're optimizing for stage n minus 1, what does that mean we're doing? It means we're mutually defecting. And so in stage n minus 1, everyone defects. What about in stage n minus 2? Well, similar story. Whatever's happened's happened, so all of these things can't change that. And the future interaction is certain, so we know that everyone's going to be defecting in the future, and that means we can't be changing anything in the past or the future, which means we need to be optimizing for stage n minus 2 at stage n minus 2, which means everyone's going to be defecting. And as it turns out, as you can see this logic, Whatever stage you're at, it doesn't matter what's happened in the past, and it doesn't matter whatever's happened in the future, because in the future, everyone's going to be defecting, which means the end result of this game is everyone defects in every stage. Doesn't matter how long the game lasts, as long as there's an end to it, stage N, then everyone defects throughout. You have absolutely no cooperation. That's very sad, very unfortunate, but true. So regardless of the length of the interaction, states never cooperate. And it's all because of the end game. The end game is known, and that's sabotaging cooperation in the earlier stages. Because we know when the interaction is happening or ending, and we know that we're going to be defecting at that end stage, that's causing all of the future, or all, all of the previous, I should say, all of the previous interactions, it's forcing all of those previous interactions to be non-cooperative. It's going to be conflictual throughout because they can foresee what's going to happen at the end. But we still have a puzzle. We still see cooperation on the international stage, especially with trade and arms agreements. And we should still be interested in trying to explain why that is possible. And one way we could change this model, make it a little bit more complicated, but perhaps get the result, is make the shadow of the future indefinite. The states might not know when the interaction will end. In the previous games, they always knew that it would end at stage N, and that was causing the future to sabotage the past, right? What if that end game is not known? What if they don't know when the interaction will end? How will that change things? Will that make cooperation possible? The answer is yes, but we will get to that in the next video. Join me then.